Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Della Cruz. Today we're putting the spotlight on a big winter event, and I mean big. You've seen us cover this story every year here on News 12 New Jersey. Now get ready for 2015. It's that time of year again. Time to get freezing for a reason. Freezing temps mean it's time to register for the 2015 Polar Bear Plunge in Seaside Heights on February 21st, 2015. Join the frigid fun and help us raise another cool million for Special Olympics New Jersey. Go to njpolarplunge.org to register and get all the details. Whether you want to plunge on your own, with a team, or with your family, take the first step today and head over to njpolarplunge.org. I am just amazed that people have the wherewithal to do that. Meteorologist James Gregorio is also involved with this event. My first guest is Kevin Burke. He's the Deputy County Administrator for Monmouth County, retired major with New Jersey State Police, and Polar Bear Plunge Event Director. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. You started this 22 years ago. 22 years ago. Uh, There's a fellow by the name of Jim Smith who's since retired and moved out to South Dakota. And uh, he came back with this great idea. He went to a Special Olympics conference and said, hey, let's give this a try in New Jersey. And it's taken off. It sure has. What's sure your goal has. for this year? Uh, this year we're hoping to have about 6,500 polar bears, brave men and women, children of all ages, uh, jump into the Atlantic Ocean. Right now I think it's about 37, 38 degrees. Wow. So it's, uh, it's a brisk dip. And we're, we're hoping to surpass last year's dollars raised, which last year we did about $1.5 we're hoping to get up to the 1.6 to the 1.7 million dollars raised in a single day for Special Olympics New Jersey. This started in Point Pleasant. It sure did. It sure did. We were in Point Pleasant for a number of years and we kind of outgrew Point Pleasant. So uh, Seaside Heights welcomed us with open arms. We went down there and it's uh, grown ever since. Have you all ever done this with snow on the ground? We have. Actually uh, we had to plow, I think it was one or two years that we had to plow a pathway from the boardwalk to the, to the uh, ocean because there was so much snow on the ground. Let's talk about what people can enjoy on the 21st. Go ahead. Uh, they can enjoy having a great time. They come out with their friends, their family, their coworkers, have a great time. There's a lot of camaraderie. There's just some esprit de corps amongst everyone. It's a great time. It's a great organization. There's 24,000 Special Olympians in New Jersey. I'm listening and, and watching. And all the money goes to Special Olympics. There's nobody, no, there's 150 plus volunteers that show up on the day of the uh, Polar Bear Plunge and everyone chips in for such a great cause. Um, Kevin, have you ever done this yourself? I have, yes. With the exception, I think, of one or two years, I may have had a flu in a bad way and I didn't think it was the wisest decision to go into the water, but every year since, I've, I've certainly done it. Seaside Heights is a great location and obviously you have the support here in New Jersey. We do. The mayor, the borough council, the borough administrator, the police chief, the police department, the fire, the EMS. We've got all kinds of uh, governmental agencies that help us out with this to make this event safe and successful as well. But it goes beyond law enforcement. It does. You we, have a lot of businesses that get involved too. We, we do. We have all the businesses. We, we are hosted um, uh, on the boardwalk at a place called Spicy. That is our headquarters. Did you say Spicy? Spicy. Perfect place yeah, for a, me. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's, it's a great place. They're wonderful people. The owners, they, they're trans, um, they're hosts. They, they can't do enough for us. That's what really, um, it, it strikes a core with me personally mm -hmm. that they, they're so wonderful to us and really the organization of Special Olympics as a whole. You also held a plunge down in Wildwood. What was that like? That was great too. That's another one. I, it's the going to be the 10th year. They had over a thousand plungers this year and they raised almost $330,000. And that was just going back a couple of weeks ago. So do you hold this plunge in different locations? We do. That, that was the one that was down in Wildwood that benefited Special Olympics as well. It's a group of law enforcement officers from out New Jersey that comprise the New Jersey Law Enforcement Torch Run for Special Olympics. It's a, it's a grassroots organization um, that uh, uh, everyone's a volunteer, everyone gets involved, and everyone's getting involved with the right, for the right reasons. And I can see in your eyes how that touches your heart, how people want to give up their time and talents to your cause, your beloved cause. It, they really do. It, it touches you on all kinds of levels. Personally, um, I've seen the development of Special Olympics athletes that I call my friends oh. over the many, many years that I've plunged with over the years. Uh, I can think of my good buddy Eric Kish that plunges with us every year. I mean, he has such a special place in my heart, the heart of my family, my children, 
So it, it really makes an impact both on me personally and professionally. I see that it does. And you it all does. just held the Winter Games there in Sussex County up yeah. there at Mount Vernon? Yes, that's an opportunity for the Special Olympians from all over the state to participate in Olympic style skiing events and ice skating and all kinds of winter activities and sports. So it's, it's a great, and this is what events like the Polar Bear Plunge or Polar Bear Plunges raise those kind of money so these Special Olympians can do these things year round free of charge. And Mountain Creek, ideal location for hosting this. My Absolutely. daughter loves going snowboarding up there. Absolutely, there's so many things to do up there. There's winter fun, winter sports for everyone. Uh, they're again great hosts for the Special Olympics and the Special Olympics family. How many athletes do you have taking part in that event? I can't tell you off the top of my <laughs> head the exact number, but I will tell you there are 24,000 Special Olympians in the state of New Jersey. And how many events take place? At a the, variety, yeah, at the Winter oh, there's, Games. There's a, again, just like you see the, the regular uh, Olympics, that's the same. There's downhill, there's slalom, there's ice skating, there's speed skating. There's all events that are parallel to the regular Olympics. And I bet the athletes love it. Kevin Burke, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much luck. for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. You all have fun there, okay, in Seaside Heights again this year. We will. We'll have a special <laughs> place if you want to come down. We'll put you right in the front of the... The 6500 plungers, Della, so you're always welcome to come down and join us. He's so cute. I will come down and be a spectator, okay? No, you're not going to see me plunge, but I'll watch everybody and support them. We'll be right back. Hey, Glenn Gardner. You're watching News 12 New Jersey. Around New Jersey, around the clock. We are back with more about the Special Olympics New Jersey. Bob Belfiore is a retired chief with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey Police Department and director of the New Jersey Law Enforcement Torch Run. Welcome. Thank you. You have done this plunge every year except two? Yes, out of the 22 I did it 20 years, yes. Congratulations. Well, thank you, but a lot of people do it and a lot of people do it every year since the inception. How do you get ready for something like that, or do you? You don't get ready for it. You just wait to hear the gun, and you run in and jump in and get out as soon as you can. And what does it feel like when you jump out? <laughs> a lot better than jumping in. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, does it take a while to recover afterward? A little bit. You throw on sweats, and you're fine in a few minutes. And you keep doing it every year because you love what you're doing. It's, it, it's so well worth it to see what we've come from, where we've come from, to where we are today and how much money we make for our athletes in New Jersey, yes. That's quite a bit, and you did this plunge in Alaska as well. Yes, I did, that wasn't the smartest thing I ever did, <laughs> but yes, I Would did. Would you do it again? Uh, no, okay. I wouldn't. Tell me about the overall purpose of law enforcement for Special Olympics New Jersey. Well, this is our 32nd year. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much in supporting our athletes uh, with uh, intellectual disabilities. Um, law enforcement got involved, uh, Mike Higgins, who was the CEO of Special Olympics, came to us at the Port Authority Police and asked if we would get involved. Uh, that was our first year. We said we would. We didn't know exactly how to get involved, but there was a thing called Law Enforcement Torch Run mm -hmm. in Wichita, Kansas that started it. Uh, I went down there, looked at it, came back and told the superintendent we could do it. We did it the first year from Liberty State Park in Jersey City to William Patterson College in Wayne. It was one leg, one event, and we made about $7,000. That's a lot. Uh, in retrospect, it was, but over the years, uh, we've become not only law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics, but law enforcement for Special Olympics, which now has numerous events. Uh, including the Seaside event? Including Seaside, including Wildwood Plunge. We have golf tournaments. We have 5Ks. We have uh, plane pull at Newark Air International Airport. Uh, we have 10 uh, statewide events and numerous smaller events. As we take a look at drone video that we have, which is the coolest thing of the Seaside event, why is this so special for law enforcement to get involved and be a part of? Well, be because it, t it took law enforcement to organize it. Um, New Jersey's team, statewide committee, has 40 law enforcement officers, all volunteers. No salaries are, are made by anyone, and as I said before, most of them have been tw with us 25 years or better. That's a long time. It really a is. A lot of so commitment. The commitment, uh, institutional knowledge. So we got a little better at what we did over the years. And law enforcement is committed as long as we're needed to raise money and awareness for our athletes. 
when law enforcement gets together in groups like that with the plunge, what's the camaraderie like for everybody? Oh, it's a great time. It's a great time. <laughs> you know, uh, law enforcement knows how to throw, throw a party. I bet they do. Yes, when they do. When do we get invited? Yeah. Just kidding. You're invited <laughs> on the 21st. Thank uh, you. As Kevin said, jump in with us. Okay. Uh, uh, the camaraderie is great. Uh, the reason we do it is great. And, you know, it's not only law enforcement. Uh, we have private and public sector. We have so many people jumping. Uh, and they're all jumping for one reason, to support the Special Olympics of New Jersey. And you know what? Every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And why is Special Olympics New Jersey so special to you, Bob? Well, because I have a, an attachment with the athletes. Most of our law enforcement officers have an attachment with our special athletes, whether they know them. I know athletes from when they were babies now, and they're, they're, they're grown men and women. You've watched them grow up. Yes, and they are become, because of Special Olympics, they have become productive members of society. And, you know, and that's what you all want, for them to pay it forward, too. It is cliche, but you, know, you do it so they can do it as best they can. Yeah. And you know what? They're amazing people, and, and they can fool you. They, they really are terrific at what they do. Never judge a book by its cover. Ever. Bob Belfiore, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Good luck to you, too, on thank the 21st. You. Have fun. More about Special Olympics New Jersey next. Hey, North Plainfield, you're watching News 12 New Jersey. It's that time of year again. Time to get freezing for a reason. Freezing temps mean it's time to register for the 2015 Polar Bear Plunge in Seaside Heights on February 21st, 2015. Join the frigid fun and help us raise another cool million for Special Olympics New Jersey. Go to njpolarplunge.org to register and get all the details. Whether you want to plunge on your own, with a team, or with your family, take the first step today and head over to njpolarplunge.org. I'm Adela Cruz. We are putting the spotlight on Special Olympics New Jersey. Jeff Baldino is Senior Director of Competition. Good to have you here. Great to be here, Della. Now, let me ask, have you done this? I have not done the, the plunge. plunge. I've nope. been there. You've been there. Working, waving to everybody as they go out to the water. So you're one of those big supporters. Uh, we, we were at the table <laughs> checking everybody in, yes. That's a lot of fun as well. Explain why events like the Seaside Plunge are so important to you, Jeff. It's huge. It's huge. The law enforcement community as a whole raising $3.1 million for our athletes on an $8 million budget is uh, incredibly impactful in terms of us supporting our athletes because what we do in training and competing is we support our athletes with free competition, free housing, free meals at all of our events. So everything that we do for our athletes is free of charge. So it's imperative um, that we get the funds to, to do that. And the law enforcement community has been huge in that at the tune of $3.1 million last year. 1.5 of that coming from the plunge last year uh, in, in Seaside. That's exceeding expectations. What's involved in the training you speak of? Year-round training. So we do 24 sports year-round and it's 24 olympic style sports so our athletes compete in seasons and they compete in the fall winter spring and a summer season and that includes uh, equipment uniforms uh, practice facilities all of that that would go in and you're in a typical traveling or rec environment we provide the same thing free of charge to our athletes let's take a look at pictures and talk about all of those sports we're talking about a variety here sure you cover we, the gamut we're covering basketball here which is part of our spring sports we have over 150 basketball teams in the state and that includes unified competition as well as traditional unified would be our athletes and and athletes from the community playing on the same team together and that covers college teams as well as uh, teams in the community. That's cool. Aquatics here, aquatics is one of our larger individual sports and a part of our summer season. So we're getting right into that. Athletes qualify from a county competition into a regional, into our summer games, which is our largest event at the College of New Jersey in June. And soccer? Soccer is again another one of our large team sports. We have over 55 soccer teams in our league plus another 45 that competed at the college level. So we're close to 100 soccer teams throughout the state. And floor hockey, which is our version of, uh, of ice hockey, so to speak. <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. Winter sports, we have about 17 teams that compete. Uh, it's a great event that we do down in Stockton College as, as the finals um, that we just completed in January as part of our winter season. And next we have biking, of course. This is a Strider bike program. This touches on some of our younger athletes, two I and a half that. to seven years old. It's a, um, our emerging athletes learning fine motor skills and a Strider bike program is part of that program that we offer uh, 
throughout, again, community programs as well as our sports complex in Lawrenceville. And you see how sports go a long way in helping a person's development beyond just the event itself. Sure, we use sports as the vehicle to, to help build the community and also provide an opportunity for our athletes to, to further their lives. So just as parents get to talk to parents and we get to help our athletes, uh, give them the skills, give them the enjoyment that comes from sports and using that to, to further develop themselves and as they grow up. Because you can start with us, the Young Athlete Program two and a half, and it can really? go until um, until you want to stop. So we're for a lifetime. So we have an opportunity to continue to create those communities and those environments using sports as the vehicle. And that plays into your mission. Exactly. Very well. Exactly. So we do use uh, sports again is the, is the driving force to, to help us further better the lives of, of those with intellectual disabilities. Now, last June, Governor Christie signed legislation that affects athletes and potential athletes getting involved in school, sports, and community. How does that affect you all? You're going to certainly see over the next year or so a, a larger presence of, of Special Olympics and, and the word unified sports in the school environment. And that school environment can go from kindergarten all the way through college. So it's providing more opportunities for our athletes, as well as you're typically developing high school and school age uh, athletes to play together in the field, in the classroom, in gym class, and, and expanding out. So as, as many schools as there are in New Jersey, you're going to hear Special Olympics, you're going to hear unified sports. It's going to be a big thing that's going to be coming in the next year or so. That's good for the program. Jeff Paulino, thank you so much for coming Ella, on Spotlight thank New you Jersey. So much. Good luck and take care. We'll be right back with an athlete. We are back with more about Special Olympics New Jersey. Kelly Sue Martin is an athlete with this organization and we are pleased to have you in our studios today. Thank you, it's a pleasure. pleasure. Tell me why this organization is so special to you, Kelly. Well, this year is gonna be my 30th year in Special Olympics once I turned 39. I started when I was nine years old. Wow. And my parents saw an ad in a paper and that's how my journey began a long time ago. And I've been doing track and field, gymnastics, bowling, tennis, you name it, I've done it. You are quite the athlete yes. and well-rounded. Yes. Is any sport your favorite? Winter games, I love winter games and I love summer games. And tell me about the medals you're wearing right now. Well, these are my two gold medals. Congratulations. Thank you. For which sports? These are from the Intermediate Super G and the Giant Slalom. Aww. Intermediate Giant Slalom. You just took part in the winter games yes. there in Vernon. Yes. What was that like? Awesome. <laughs> it was really, really awesome. This year, everyone surpassed our expectations. Everyone treated us with respect. And, and I thought it was just the most amazing thing I've ever participated in. Is that the first time you've done the Winter Games? No, I've done the Winter Games since, I think I was, set, I started doing skiing when I was 17, so. Ooh, what is skiing like? That sounds like so much when fun. I was, when I did it the first time, I was so scared and petrified, but now that I might, and now that next year I'll be moving up to advance, I'm gonna challenge myself to do better and challenge myself, you know, to take more control. Risk. Yeah, take, get better risk and make myself understand, okay, gotta, not stay in one level, you gotta move up and- Push yourself. Push yourself, yes. You met Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Yes. Tell me about that. It was a really nice experience. I was, um, in 2006, I went to the first USA National Games in Ames, Iowa. She was there, I, I met her there, and then we um, introduced the Eunice Kennedy Shriver basketball gym, and we honored her that day. Nice lady? Yes, at the Special Big Headquarters. She is such a genuine lady. Very, very genuine, very down to earth, very understanding. You too. obviously were quite impressed with her. I was very impressed with her. Kelly Sue Martin, thank you so much for thank coming you. on Spotlight New it's Jersey. A it's been a to pleasure meet you. talking to you. Thank I you. have enjoyed this. Thank you. And you keep up the great work with thank the Special you. Olympics. I know I they're very proud of you. Thank you. And again, if you'd like to find out more about the Special Olympics and all the guests on today's program, be sure to log on to news12.com and, of course, my Facebook page. You can find all the information you need. Facebook, Twitter, news12.com. I'm Della Cruz, New Jersey. The spotlight is on you and Special Olympics New Jersey. Don't forget about that polar bear plunge, February 21st. Support a great cause. Yes. Have a good time.
Hey Nutley, you're watching News 12 New Jersey. Around New Jersey, around the clock.